let's let's talk a little more about the successful juniors because I know a lot of people out there want to be better. Obviously, if you're playing tournaments, your goal is to improve. I mean, do you think a lot of these top juniors are? Do they? We we know they have the talent and they're working hard, hard obviously. But do you think? I mean, for you you as well, did you spend a lot of time on mental toughness strategies and game strategies in general, or were you more into just drilling, hitting balls, muscle memory? I mean, do you think? What do you think about that? It, it has to be it has to be a combination of everything. You when you're developing, you gotta develop. Um, obviously, the the strength is gonna come with time. So some kids uh, or some girls are gonna develop later than others. Mm -hmm. um, but the mechanics, the the technical fundamentals of the stroke, they have to be there since they're nine, ten, eleven, twelve years old. I mean, that's when you're really gonna see um, somebody when when they have good technical. Uh, skills when they are 12 or 13 they're really gonna develop into good players when they're 15 16 17 right in the meantime you're also building the mental toughness through the competition um, through different exercises through different uh, types of drills on the court mm -hmm. um, but it is very important I mean it's very important that the kid develops uh, from a very young age I mean 14 15 that mental toughness and and being able to withstand the pressures of the competition right. because competition is always going to be pressure because you want to win. Right. So if you want to win, you've got to be able to withstand that pressure. And do you think, I mean, do you think a lot of these parents, or the, or the children, in fact, let's say the children, the child's 10 or he's 12 years old, does he have to be a great player at that age? I mean, if he's great then, does that always translate into a successful professional career? Or do some people kind of blossom later with their games? Yeah, not at all. I mean, not, when you're 10 or 12, you don't even know if you're going to be playing tennis at 16, right. 17, or 18. So it really, it really doesn't matter um, at that age how, how good you think your kid is going to be because mm -hmm. you, you're never going to know. And mm -hmm. Not only you as a parent are not going to know, but nobody else is going to know. So you just gotta let the kid develop into um, into his game and just being a normal child. I mean, just going to regular school and right. doing other sports mm -hmm. and you know just you know just doing normal kid, kid mm -hmm. things. Not not worrying so much about the rankings as well. Not just worrying, so worrying about the exactly. progress in the game. Yeah, exactly. Not worrying so much about the rankings. Just making sure that he is progressing mm -hmm. and that he's developing and that he's not getting any. Uh, bad habits out of the strokes and out of the mechanical things that are going to be important when he's uh, 17 or 18. I mean, nowadays you see this, this, uh, um, I mean, some people, some parents are just too obsessed with the kids when they're 8, 9, 10, right. and they're already, you know, saying, oh, my, my daughter's going to win Wimbledon when she's 15, <laughs> or my son is going to be the next number one in the world when he's 17. Well, you never know. There's too many things that can happen between 10 and 17. You know, there's seven years there. The kid might get injured. The kid might get bored. The kid might like, you know, something else. And, and you just never know. Yeah, I think you brought up a good point there when you talked about being bored. Or another word is, is burnout, possibly, which happens to a lot, of, a lot of junior tennis players. How did you, I mean, you obviously started at a young age, and you took it to a career. So you, obviously there was no burnout there. How did you kind of combat that when you were growing up? I mean, did you ever feel burnout when, at any point in your career? Or? Yeah, you do. You do feel burnout at, at times, but it, there's everything has to be done with balance. You gotta balance your life. I mean, you gotta be able to. Even when I was a junior and playing tournaments in Colombia and winning the tournaments, I will still go and play, you know, soccer, or mm -hmm. I'll still go fishing, or yep. I'll still go do some other activities. I mean, it wasn't only just tennis and just tennis crazy family, which they would do everything about around the tennis. Child no, tennis, yeah. yeah. No, it, it, it didn't. I mean, everything was about having a normal life and tennis was just a part of it mm -hmm. that we became I mean I say we because my brother and sister they play college here in the US we became successful tennis players that was just uh, an icing on the cake but the family our family was just absolutely normal we we had this great balance and we did you know so very supportive and yeah. they left the tennis they left them they left the matches at the court and then when you went home they were just mom and dad and you yeah. guys could have fun and relax you absolutely know? right I mean maybe you'll talk about the match or or you know what what we always talked about was the behavior on the court that mm -hmm. was always addressed the attitude in, yeah yeah in 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 my family i mean if you had a bad behavior if you were throwing your racket and you know doing stuff that you shouldn't do then that was addressed mm -hmm. you know by my dad or by my mom and then you know but nothing about the technical this or technical that or you know you you know you just you just 
just being supportive and being mm -hmm. everybody positive and and, and having a, a good balance right around yeah, I think that's key around yeah. the sport yeah. yeah and let's talk to some juniors out there because I know when I was playing there were some times where everything was great I win in matches but then there's those times that no matter how great you are whether you're Pete Sampras or whoever you are you're gonna go through some some matches where things aren't clicking you might have a little losing streak whether it be a few matches or whether it be 10 or 20 but there's always those times I mean how did you when you were playing I mean I'm sure obviously you didn't have a ton of them but <laughs> I'm sure they came, came at some point how do you try to combat that or how do you try to you know, what do you tell yourself to get past those points when you when you feel like you're stuck a little bit? That's when you have your support system, your mm -hmm. parents and the coach that is working with you and the people that are working with you, they're always reinforcing that positive energy. Don't worry about it, it's going to be okay, you just keep working, it's going to turn around, keep working, it's going to turn around and eventually it does turn mm -hmm. around. Um, you can never stop believing in yourself, you can never doubt yourself that you can do it. And then once, uh, I mean it's normal to go through those uh, batches of not winning not winning any anything mm -hmm. so you just you know you just settle down and you go back to basics you work hard you continue to believe in what you're doing and then eventually it turns around i mean it just does turn around yeah okay just keep working through it yeah that's good advice and, and tell us a little bit just you know some some players are going to make it as professionals some players obviously you know the majority are not going to make it as professionals tell us some things you learned in junior tennis that maybe not so much helped you in the pros, but some other things that you, you you learned that were life lessons, so to speak, with junior tennis? I mean, what, what, what I could say right now is that if you play tennis and you end up playing for a, for a, for a college year, I mean, with a scholarship, I mm -hmm. think you've done great. I mean, you've done unbelievable. I mean, if, if your son or your daughter is able to educate themselves through sport, mm -hmm. that's the best thing that can happen for a family. Um, if they eventually, after going to college, decide that they can play pros, well, that's, that, that's just another story. But if you, if, you, if you develop your child or your daughter and they become a successful college player and they can educate themselves to, with, a, with a scholarship, that's mm -hmm. like unbelievable. That's, that's gold, one yeah. of the things. Yeah, that's golden. I mean, that's, that's one of the things that I like to tell the, the parents of the kids that I coach is that it might happen that they become a pro, but if it doesn't, college is going to be a great option they're going to go to school have the scholarship get the degree and have a normal life and mm -hmm. they're going to transmit that same energy to their kids when they have their own kids they're going to tell them my parents gave me the opportunity to play tennis and i educated myself in college i'm going to give you that same opportunity mm -hmm. and it becomes like a like a snowball like a vicious circle that you know it just it just carries on yeah Okay, and then let's just talk just a little bit more. I wanted to touch on. Uh, I know you work with pros and junior. You've worked with everybody as far as being there and coaching them. Uh, just for my own edification, I always want to know what are the top players right now. I mean, as far as juniors, are they playing seven days a week? Are they are they training six hours a day? What are they doing right now? That the, the top people that want to be, you know, possibly go to college or, or become a prof professional. They're they're playing about six or seven hours a day. Okay. I mean, they're working out about six or seven hours a day. Some might work a little bit, you know, an hour or two longer. Mm -hmm. And you know, it includes everything. It includes the tennis, the you know, the conditioning, you know, the gym or the running. Or so whatever. everything revolved around yeah, tennis, six yeah. or seven hours. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's a it's a full mm -hmm. day thing. And and um, one of the one of the most important things that I that I that I am emphasizing right now is the the the, the mentality, the mental strength. It has to be there because the other guy or the other girl can hit the ball as good mm -hmm. as you do. Right. They can move as good as you do, but they cannot control the way you think and the way you act and the way you think on the court. I mean, they can't control that. So it's something that the the, men, the mentality right now is making a big difference. And it's a huge difference, isn't it? Between difference. between when you were 70 in the world and the guy that were 700, it's pretty close in strokes. Those guys can all play. It's just a lot of it comes down to the mental Absolutely. mental toughness. Absolutely, it's the confidence yeah. that you have in yourself and the. And the toughness, being able to to run one more ball, being able to uh, put an extra ball on the court, just being able to take that little bit extra punishment of playing a little bit extra long <laughs> yeah, point exactly. because that's what it is. Because your yeah. body is gonna hurt. I mean, when you yeah, playing, especially in Colombia, red right, clay. Yeah. Oof. I mean, your body's gonna hurt, your legs are gonna right. hurt, but you have to be able to to take that little bit extra, you know, extra pain, mm -hmm. and then it's gonna make a big difference. Mm -hmm. And that just comes through the mental, through the mental. So strength. most of your players that they. They drilling 50% playing matches 50%. I mean, what's the ratio of yeah, drilling doing, match we're play? Yeah, we're doing pretty much that. I mean, okay. we're, we're pretty much. Uh, I mean, if I talk about the girl that I'm coaching now, this professional girl, she's we're drilling half the time and we're playing matches half of the time. Okay. Practice matches. Yep. Um, we use those practice matches to work on the things that we do 
on the drill, on the drill so. and then uh, we try to develop that um, mental toughness. Um, I insist a lot on her and try not to make the same mistakes that she does on the drills, not to make him on the yeah. on the on the practice matches exactly. because that's going to carry on into the into the yeah, tournaments. Yeah. Into the tournaments. Yeah. Okay, great information. And in closing today, if we could, let's just talk to the parents and the children that are watching us one more time. If you could say kind of one thing for them to, to focus on or really think about to improve their child's tennis career as a whole. I mean, what are what are some of the important lessons you think you could you would you would tell parents and children alike? Be supportive. I mean, I like to tell the parents to be supportive, uh, to be positive. There's nothing like being positive to the kids, and and I have and I have seen it through the years. When I see I have one kid that their parents are very negative, so I see the way that they get stuck or they get leveled, mm -hmm. and I see the other kid that their parents are always positive. How the kid continues to improve, and how he continues to reach his goals, or you know, just continue to move on with with their career. Mm -hmm. um, it's important to be supportive. Um, not being too much involved on the court, I don't think that is very necessary. I mean, as long as you have a good coach and a coach that you trust, you don't have to be on the court because then you just, I mean, you would just be in, um, how, do, how do I say, it's, it's just uh, like an obstacle for the kid just to be free and to be experiencing a different, uh, you know, a different personality, which is the one coming in from the coach. Mm -hmm. um, the kid and the coach, they need to develop together the relationship of trust so they can continue to, to progress. Um, it's very important. I mean, I, I cannot emphasize enough on being, on being positive with the kids. I mean, the positive reinforcement, um, telling the kid that they did a great job, that they did a good job, that they did a good job, it's, it's, it's extremely, extremely important. Um, the other thing is do not allow the bad behavior that, um, that it's just just not right and that has to be cut off from from its roots once you see the kid behaving poorly on a court or on a tournament then you have to address that issue but you know out of the out of the other stuff it's just being positive with the kid fantastic information Mauricio I really appreciate you being with us here today uh, hopefully you guys took away a lot from here hearing from somebody who's been there done that and has a successful career so this is Jay Travis with the junior tennis show we'll see you next time